Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. We got a good bunch, size bunch here today. It's great to see y'all. Uh, quick announcement things to run through uh, to let you know. Uh, year end tax giving receipts. If you gave to this church and would like tax deduction, that information is available on the table by the front door. Doug Barton will be there. So uh, if you haven't received those or gotten those yet, please grab those on the way out. Uh, secondly, nursery. We're looking for some more nursery helpers. So uh, if you'd like to help out in the nursery watching little ones, there's a sign-up sheet by the entrance to the nursery there. So if you would like to serve in that way, we'd appreciate it. Third thing, uh, dance is coming up. So we will, uh, two weeks from today, the 13th, we'll have our Valentine's dance here at 12 noon. I'm going to get some sign-up sheets going around here. Uh, why don't I do that right now? And uh, if you signed up yesterday or last week, no worries. Uh, just pass it on. But if it can make its way to the back, that'll help us know how many, uh, how much food to bring. So 13th at noon, and there are dance lessons this Friday, February 4th, at the church here starting at 6.30. And you can drop kids at 5 if you want to have a date beforehand. And the lessons will begin at 6.30 on Friday here. So we're getting ready for the dance. All right. Uh, those are the announcement things I wanted to let you know about. Um, as we get ready to lead into worship and the message that's going to come and the singing, I wanted to tell you a story. Have you ever um, not gotten something and then got it? Like you didn't really understand something and then at some point, it clicked and you understood it. So this is a story about that. I've shared portions of this before, but when Heidi and I got married, uh, it's been almost 10 years now uh, ago, she was living in Enterprise and she and our two older kids, Landry and Dawson, they had an old trailer that they had had with her first husband, Jeff, before he died. And it was parked in the back by their house at Enterprise and it had been turned into kind of a playhouse for the kids. So it's this old vintage camper. And when we got married and we were going to move them to Legrand, I said to her, what are we going to do with that old tin can, babe? I mean, what? <laughs> we don't have a place to park the thing. Where are we going to park it? It's expensive to store that. What are we going to do with that? <clears throat> And she she wanted to keep it. There were a lot of memories that had been made in the thing, and it was special to her. But I said, I don't think we really have a good place to park the thing. Uh, and I don't think I called it a tin can at the time. So, uh, But I said, I think we, I think we just got to give it away or something. We don't really have a place for it. And sh she said, okay, we'll, we'll do that. So we gave it to a friend in Enterprise. She did 10 years ago. Our son Dawson graduated from high school eight years after we were married in 2020. And when he graduated, he wanted to locate that trailer and get it back. So he made the lady an offer. She sold it back to him and Dawson was going to fix it up. It had been out in the weather for like eight years, just leaking and getting beat up and so on. So Dawson got it. And then he uh, finally... We said, could we buy it from you? And he, he graciously sold it to us. And so this past summer, nine years later, at that point, we went to work fixing it up. And, you know, it had, had bees had built nests in the walls. There was rot where the studs had rotted. The roof had been leaking and so on and so forth. And we did the best we could to fix it up so that we could go take her to the Snake River, camp in it, go fishing. We got rained on, big rainstorm there. I grew up tent camping. Here we are, high and dry, sleeping in a comfortable bed, and I thought, I get it now. Like, I didn't used to get it. I get it. And you can see, this is Clementine. Uh, you know, my darling, my darling Clementine, she was lost and gone forever. Dreadful sorrow, but no, she came back to us. You can see she's got some dings and dents, but we parked it, raised a cup to the Lord, cheers to the Lord, drank a cup of tea. And so the point of the story is something that at one time as a new husband and father, I didn't get. Now I get it. 
I see it. I see the value in old Clementine. And so that uh, keep that in mind as we sing and as you listen to Mark's message today, because he's going to point us. It's going to touch on that us getting something that we didn't used to get, which is the gospel, which is salvation, which is our eyes being open to see something that we didn't see before. So if you could keep that in mind. Uh, Let's have our musicians and worship team come on up if you guys would make your way, and I'll offer an opening prayer, and then we'll sing, all right? Father in heaven, we uh, give praise to you, Lord, as our gracious creator, uh, our loving heavenly Father and Savior for those who believe and trust in your Son, as the one who is all wise and who is good and righteous. And I thank you, God, just want to give you praise that Um, You're the God who helps us to see things that we didn't once see. And so my prayer, our prayer today is that for those in this room who have yet to really get it, to really see Jesus and embrace him for who he is, that today would be the day when your spirit opens their eyes and they want him and they trust in him and they're brought to life in him. So would you help us to get it for those of us? in whose hearts you have done that work, may we appreciate afresh your grace to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everyone. Uh, When Bob's team is up here, he's always talking about being a rebel and doing something different, more songs, less songs. If you guys would stand with us, we've got three songs, so I'm not doing too much different but if you would stand for the first two songs um that's as far as a rebel as we'll get today um and uh maybe there'll be an aha this is why reason so i just want to be like bob is really what 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 i want to do so let's sing together
may be seated. So this last song we're going to sing is Be Thou My Vision. And it's uh, actually the reason why the Brush Girls are up here with us. Um, growing up, uh, my siblings and I were homeschooled. And we would, uh, I don't remember if it was every week or every month, we would learn a uh, new hymn um, all together. Anyway, um, and learn a little bit behind the words. And uh, we would sometimes get into different vocal parts. But uh, Elizabeth and Kyle and their kids are doing that same thing. And so that was has been exciting to hear, and they are here to help us sing Be Thou My Vision, because it's their most recent song they've been learning. So, here we go. Dara, before you put anything up on the screen, I want them to do a guessing game. So don't put any slides up yet. Great song. Of the kids singing. All right, today uh, we have a sermon illustration, and this is uh, our illustration uh, helper thing. Who can guess what passage we're going to cover first? Who has a guess? Ezekiel, right. What, what's the name of the story? Valley of the Dry Bones. Put it up. So, uh, Drew Lusco is going to help me read this story. He has a better reading voice than I do. And uh, Drew is a 
football player for Eastern. Can you tell it? <laughs> He's in our young adults group. Read the story to us, Drew. All right, so we're going to be in Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10, the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Then as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Amen. Thanks, Drew. So um, let's pray, because this sermon's ha- uh, Unless God's Spirit gives us understanding, we're not going to get it. Remember, uh, Brock said, got it. Uh, It's going to take the Holy Spirit for us to get it today. So let's pray and ask him. Father, we're so grateful for your word. Your word is precious uh, truth. We we call it our foundation. We look to it for truth, and we ask you by the power of your spirit, by the power of your spirit, open our eyes, open our ears, and our understanding, and give life uh, to dry bones, as it were. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you want to know where this bone came from, it's pretty hefty bones. Uh, come talk to me after the service, and I'll tell you where, what critter it came from. So, first slide, next slide. Okay, turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. It's a key verse for us to understand and remember. I'm slowly going blind, so I have to have an extra light. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So I have a question for us. Um, Dry bones, does this bone even know that it's dead? I mean, does it? Is it able to cry out and say, Lord, help me, I'm just a dry bone? Uh, It's past crying out. It's past help. It's just a dry bone. It it cannot call out to God. And this this verse said, while we were dead in our transgressions, God made us alive. So the, the initial origin of our regeneration from a dry bone to a living spirit, is an act of God. Uh, By grace we have been saved through faith, and this not of ourselves. This is a few verses down. This, Pastor Wayne pointed out last week, when it says this not of ourselves, it's talking about the faith. The faith is a gift from God. Romans 12, 3 says, Do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but in in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. gives each, each person that becomes a believer gives a measure of faith. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Next slide. 
Our passage this morning is in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, I mean 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Did I write 1 Corinthians? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that's where we are in this study through Corinthians. And um, a new friend of mine named Rod asked me on Wednesday, he said, uh, are you going to preach the whole chapter? How can you possibly preach the whole chapter? Well, we can't. So I'm just going to pick some parts from it that are important, really important. And I'd like us to start with verse 14. I think uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is the key verse to the whole chapter. And it talks about, uh, you may have trouble, it doesn't actually say dry bones, but you'll get it when we read this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, a non-believer cannot understand the things of God, cannot understand because he doesn't yet have the Spirit of God in him. So now let's go back to the, the first five verses in this chapter. This is Paul uh, talking to the to a church um, that has all kinds of misconceptions. First uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse one. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquent or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with, get this, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith may not rest on man's wisdom, or, but on God's power. So Paul's saying, the way you come to faith is by the power of God. It's not because the preacher is skilled. It's not because um, the person who's telling you about God has an eloquent argument. It's because the Spirit of God quickens your dead and lifeless spirit and regenerates you and makes you able to understand. Next slide. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, uh, which is an important verse that goes with our topic today. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. They cannot see. They cannot see because they've been blinded. So... Uh, the way that we do see is by the power of God that regenerates our dead and lifeless spirit and makes us able to see. Next slide. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 7. By the way, these are two cool verses. We're about to go through 1 Corinthians 4, 7 and 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. And they both deal with the same subject. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, What do you have that you didn't receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you didn't? So if you have spiritual sight, if you understand the scriptures, if you know who God is, that was a gift, a gift from God that he regenerated and quickened your dead and lifeless spirit and he made you able to see and he gave you understanding uh, and your spiritual sight comes from him. So you can't, we have nothing to brag about. Now, uh, next slide. Second Corinthians. Where is it? Oh, first Corinthians. Uh, that, I'll read that same verse again, the key verse in our passage today. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, 
because they are spiritually discerned. So, how can we boast about spiritual honor? I, know, I came to God because I understood what was at stake and I made a wise decision. You can't say that. You didn't understand until he, he opened your eyes. Next slide. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 says, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this unsurpassing power is from God and not from us. So, can you imagine a clay pot boasting, I'm a clay pot, I'm, I'm something special. The reason we're special is because what's inside us, what God put inside of us. And it's not the clay pot that we our our own person that we boast about. It's the fact that God had mercy on us and he put his spirit in us so we could see. Next slide. Uh, so here's one of my favorite passages. It's a good one to turn to. It's in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is right after Isaiah. Isaiah is a big book in the middle of your Bible. Jeremiah... Chapter 9, verse um, 23 and 24. If we can't boast about our good sense enough to come to God, if we, if we understand that it was God who brought us to himself and not our good sense, then um, it's silly to boast. And here's something we can boast on, however, uh, Jeremiah nine twenty three. This is what the Lord says: Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast about this: that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. So. The thing we are to boast about is what's inside that pot, the light that's shining out the cracks. It's, it's the fact that God lives in us. That is a wonderful thing, but we didn't come there because we had good sense enough to make that decision. That is something God does. He, he causes, he speaks to dry bones and they come to life by the power of his spirit. Next slide. Ears to hear. This is a great passage. Luke 8, um, verse 4 through 10. You know, I, I, when, when an amateur preacher like me gets a chance to preach, uh, they frequently get flustered. But I'm not really worried about it. I, I mean, I, the carnal part of me is. But I'm not really worried about it because... If you get this, it's because God gave it to you. It isn't because I had an eloquent enough sermon to explain it well. So, dear Father, please open our ears that we can hear. Let's look at um, Luke chapter 8, uh, verses 4 through 10. Uh, when a large crowd was gathered and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told them this parable. A farmer went out to sow seed, and as he scattered the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock. When it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still others fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times what was sown. Then he, uh, when he had said this, he called out, and he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. The disciples asked him, what does this parable mean? He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. So it's, 
Jesus, the disciples ask him, why, why do you use these obscure uh, stories to teach us spiritual things? It would be easier for you to just tell us what you mean. And why are you speaking these parables? And Jesus said, I'm speaking them because I'm giving you the ability to understand, but I'm not giving it to everybody. You have the ability to understand because I've given it to you. That's a hard thing to, to uh, swallow, but it, it, words of Jesus. Next slide. Uh, when we were in uh, Thailand one time, when we lived in China, we had to go to Thailand every six weeks because our visa forced us to leave China often get our visa renewed. It's part of the hardship they place on um, foreigners in China. So we were down there and we were in a, um, a Christian retreat. It was a place where missionaries from hard places could go and recuperate, so to speak. So we were upstairs in a library that we like to go to. It smelled like old books, one of our favorite places to go. We had an air conditioner. We love that. And uh, there was a young lady that came up there, she had been um, helping an orphanage run by missionaries in China, and the missionaries had to leave the field suddenly, and she was left running this orphanage, and she was, what, like 22 years old? She wasn't very old, and she was in charge of this orphanage, all these kids depending on her, and she was uh, there to somebody had t given her a break and she was there to try and collect herself and recuperate and so in the course of talking with her we started explaining these things about God about how wonderful it is that God has shed his light on us opened our eyes opened our ears so we can hear opened our understanding but he doesn't do it with everybody and she got mad because there's um this thing called free will that most of, especially Americans, think they have uh, that allows them to choose between God or not. And so she was angry. But the more we explained to her that this is a gift from God, I mean, this is something to be rejoice over that he has, not because of any, any merit you have, but just shown his light down on you and you can now see it's just a when we were going through these scriptures with her, instead of being angry, tears started flowing down her cheek because she understood the grace of God. How, how humbling it is to realize that God has opened your eyes. He chose you and gave you understanding. He caused a dry bone to come to life again. And it wasn't because of anything you did. It was just the pure grace of God. And when you truly understand that, tears just come. You can't hardly help it. And um, uh, she was grateful for the teaching. And she, she wrote down all the scriptures we went through. And she was uh, changed. Her life was changed. And I think... I hope I like to think that she went back to the orphanage with renewed uh, confidence in God's spirit. It wasn't because of her works or because uh, she was able uh, to handle the difficult situation. You know, not only is our salvation a gift from God. Our, remember in Romans twelve three it says, "For for uh, do not." Think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but in accordance with the measure of faith that God has given us. So God has given different measures of faith to different people. It's a gift. So you can't, one person with, with strong faith and one with a weak faith, a strong person can say, what's the matter with you? Because our faith, our strength, our growth is all a gift from God, just like our salvation. There's nothing about our walk with Jesus that we can brag about. Uh, Galatians 3.3 3 says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by mere human effort? In other words, 
our growth is not because of our effort either. It's because of the gift, the grace of God. Next slide. Romans 9. Now, this is a difficult passage for many of us. Turn with me because this is important to see it actually written down. It's not just Mark talking about it. It's really there. Romans chapter 9. Let's start reading in verse 10. Romans 9, verse 10. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one and the same father, our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born, remember um, uh, Rebekah had uh, Esau and Jacob, and one of them came out, his heel came out first, and they tied a red string around it, and, and then they were born, and they, they ended up, remember the... Esau sold his birthright for a pot of uh, stew when his father was dying. Remember that? Okay, verse 11. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works but by him who calls, she was told the old, older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate it. And here's the argument. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not, therefore, depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, why then does God still blame us for who resist his will? But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed to him, uh, what is formed, say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes, and some for common use? What if God, choosing to show His wrath and make His power known, bore with great patience the objects of His wrath? prepared for destruction. What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? What if he did this to make the riches of his grace apparent to us that believe? The riches of God's grace, it's his choosing to open our eyes, to make life come to our dead spirit. How can, this, how can the man without the spirit understand the things of the spirit? Because they're spiritually discerned. So it's God, 100% God. Next slide. So the question was often asked to us in China, well, if you believe these things, if God is the one who chooses and not, um, you know, dead bones don't choose, God chooses whether to put life in them or not. If that's true, why, do you, why are you even here in China? Why do you uh, evangelize? Why even talk to people about Jesus? It's God's decision, not yours. Well, John chapter 15, uh, verse 16 says, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Let me get it right. John 15, verse 16. I don't want to misquote this. Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So it's God's decision 
to choose us, and it's God's decision who we share Christ with. You may think that you have the uh, random chance to share Christ with whoever you want, but God has appointed you, divine appointments for you to share Christ. And when you share, it's not going to be because you got good, good presentation. You've memorized the right scriptures. You, got, you make logical sense with your argument. That's not what's going to save people. It's the power of God that opens, your, opens hearts, opens understanding, gives blind people the ability to see, makes dry bones come to life again. It's God's decision. And if you go out to a, tell somebody about Jesus, you can be confident. Now, it's not up to me, it's up to God. And when I share, he's appointed me to go and bear fruit. So I'm going to go bear fruit. And uh, it's, a, it's an act of God. Next slide. So, humbly grateful for grace. When we think of our salvation, it's very important to realize we had nothing to do with choosing God. This bone did not so to speak, this bone, dead, dry bone, did not choose God. It's God that caused us to come to life, and it'll cause us to be more grateful. If you think it's because you, you had good sense enough to do it, then you can give some of the credit to yourself. If you think you're growing in faith because it's your faith, uh, uh, it is your faith. It's like God gave you this gift, and that belongs to you, but you, ha you can't forget that it came from God. So it makes us humble and it makes us appreciate grace even more. Next slide. So we're going to sing together Amazing Grace. Uh, the words will be up on the screen. And if you would, please uh, sing along. How sweet the sound that's it. was great. 